Today I'm doing a video that's a bit different to my usual ones and it's about this speaker board. Um, this speaker board belongs to Charlie Petty of DC Kits but he gave me it to do some work on. I've changed some of the speakers, put some updated things on that he didn't have before and I just thought before I send it back to him I'll um, do a quick video and just show what some of the different speakers sound like. The board itself is fairly primitive. It's got a lock sound decoder tester on here. Um, it's got a sound chip there, so at the minute it's a class 37 sound chip. But I suppose one of the beauties of this is that you can just take the sound decoder off and put something else on. So it's quite easy to change if you wanted to maybe listen to a different speaker. Uh, listen to a different sound file with a different speaker and make comparisons. So it's been quite handy for that while I've had it so that I could try a few different speakers before I chose one, before doing a sound fitting job. Um, all the speakers are wired through this 12-way switch. So it's just a rotary switch. And you can select 12 different positions. So it just works through in order. And then there's an additional set of uh, contacts here. So there's only 11 speakers. Um, but these make up the 12th and they can just be connected to any speaker that you might want to listen to which isn't on the board. Um, there's quite a wide range of speakers and there's some sort of surprises, so they surprised me anyway as to what, what didn't sound as good as I expected or something sounded better than I expected. So I'll run through them. I'm not sure how well the sound's going to be picked up. Um, I don't know if it'll sound as good on the video as it does in real life and I don't know if they'll uh, all sound as different as they do in person but hopefully it helps a little bit and hopefully it's quite interesting to watch. First thing I'll do is get the motor running before I switch the sound on so that we don't have to go through a full start up sequence and I'm going to put drive lock on as well just so that it keeps the motor fairly slow so that that doesn't become too much of a background noise. So the first speaker, I'll try and point at each one as I go through them, um, but I might forget, so hopefully you can keep up. So the first one's just a standard 20 by 40 not sealed, and it's the way that most people tend to fit a speaker when they first get into sound, before they realise that better things are available. So if you listen to that, I suppose in isolation it doesn't sound too bad um, but it does sound really tinny and it's not particularly loud either you can probably hear me quite clearly over that one the next one is exactly the same speaker but it's in its enclosure and the enclosure's been sealed it's sealed with black tack and a little bit of glue where the black tack wasn't quite sealing it so if I move to that one it's a huge transformation, it's about twice as loud, there's a lot more bass and it doesn't really sound like the same speaker. It's probably much harder for you to hear me over this one as well. But yeah, not a bad speaker actually and that's one of the things that I'm surprised about, that you can actually make a, a reasonable sound from the, the speaker that it comes with. But the enclosure is very big, so you do need to be conscious that that enclosure as it is won't fit in that many different models. Um, it does sound a little bit muffled as well, which I think is just down to it being a slightly sort of cheaper and more basic speaker. And the next speaker is a sugar cube. So it's obviously a lot quieter than the 20 by 40 which I think is down to its size really. Um, the sound quality might be slightly better, it might be slightly clearer and uh, there might even be a little bit more bass from that. It's not a bad sound, it's just a little bit quiet. Probably benefit from having two of those rather than just one on its own. The next one's the iPhone speaker. So I think an iPhone speaker is fairly similar to a sugar cube speaker really when you look at it internally. But the enclosure of the iPhone speaker helps the volume a lot. Um, I think this is one of the clearest speakers as well and I think that's probably because it will develop to play music and video rather than just playing sound out of a train so I think the, the quality of that overall is very good 
but again it does probably lack a little bit a little bit of bass compared to some of the other speakers. It's quite loud as well that one. So quite a nice speaker. The next thing is the bass enhanced. This one seems like a bit of a step backwards actually. I expected it to be sort of on a par to the iPhone and maybe even slightly better. If I did use to be popular these, um, at one point people did use just bass enhanced or bass reflex because they were pretty much the only thing on the market. But I think that technology has moved on a little bit and actually this is probably the worst sounding speaker in test other than the unsealed 20 by 40 so yeah quite quite disappointed with that one the next one is the bass reflex which is actually almost slightly better i think it's based on a 20 by 40 speaker because the drivers look very similar um, but because of the bass part on it and the fact it's not sealed i think it takes away a lot of the uh, volume from it Maybe there is a little bit more bass, but I don't think I don't think it's particularly good. I th don't think it's the nicest sounding speaker I've heard, and there's certainly less bass from this one than there is even from the iPhone and the SugarCube speaker. So I think again, technology's moved on, and there's there's better things available now than the bass reflex speakers that used to be the sort of industry standard if you're trying to upgrade the speaker. The next one is a, a massive improvement over any of them so far. It's one of DC Kit's Class 33 or Class 26 or 27 tank mouldings. So it's, it's not an easy to use speaker as such because there's not many scenarios where you can use it. But Charlie Petty of DC Kit's does make these enclosures with the speaker and you can fit the speaker into the tanks. It acts as a whole replacement fuel tank you take off the Haldron moulding and on that particular model it does sound really good it's really loud and there's far more bass from this than there is from some of the other speakers again it's perfectly sealed it's got glue all the way around the edges so no air can escape um, but I think the, the success of this speaker is largely down to the size of it. I don't think there's anything particularly clever about the, the design of it. It's not that much different in terms of appearance to the, the drivers that are in some of the other speakers. It's just a lot bigger and I think it's got a bit more to it in terms of, um, sort of it, its magnet seems a little bit bigger which I think means it's a little bit more powerful. Uh, the next speaker is the Zimmer Dumbo speaker. Again, this one surprised me, I do think it sounds good. Um, it sounds very similar to the 28x40, but it's a lot smaller and it is more useful in different models. I think the main downside to this speaker is that it's fairly tall compared to some of the others and they're very expensive at about £25, which is quite a lot on top of the cost of the decoder, but it is good. It doesn't have the most bass compared to some of the other speakers, but again, it's quite loud and clear, so I do quite like that one. The next one is the Mega Bass speaker. So hopefully you can pick up that there's a bit of a, a jump in bass performance from the others. It's a different type of driver in this one with a sort of a, a metal driver, a metal cone. Which seems to um, give a bit of an improvement in quality. And this one again, it's quite clear, quite a lot of treble as well, so it's quite good sort of across the full range. And it does sound pretty impressive really with this Class 37 sound file. It's also one of the louder ones as well. Again, a fully sealed speaker and there's no gaps in enclosure and that always seems to help the volume. 
to the next one, because the AM2. This one surprises me, because it doesn't even sound like it's playing the same sound file. There's so much more bass in this. It's kind of almost a, an echo into the bass, there's so much. And it really does sound good. It's the only speaker I've heard in this scale which has this much bass, and I think it it replicates some engine sound files really well. But where it maybe lacks is some of the engine sounds that need a little bit more high frequencies, like plus 66s and things. I don't think this suits them particularly well. But when you listen to horns, they do still sound good, and there's a lot of depth to the sound. So that's, that's one of my favourites, just based on the fact it's got so much bass, um, but it's quite big, it's, it's the biggest double O gauge speaker on here, so it's not the easiest one to fit. And then the last speaker is certainly only going to be suitable for O gauge or bigger, you're not going to get in a double O gauge model because it's too wide, even if you have the the length and the height you're not going to get in from a width point of view. But this has a very similar amount of bass to the EM2, but where the EM2 maybe lacks a little bit of treble, this one doesn't. So it's louder as well. So it's just by far the best speaker on here. It's got a really good sound to it. So you can see why our gauge sounds getting more popular. Because who wouldn't want the model to sound like that? Hopefully the camera picks it up, because it really does sound good. So, I'll just turn the sound back off for a minute. So obviously it's not a completely fair test because we're comparing speakers which won't fit in every model. So in the example of this being a Class 37, you're probably going to fit most of this front row, probably with the exception of that, into a Class 37. These can be fitted into a Class 37 with a bit of work, but it, it generally means making a new enclosure for it. These can be fitted to a Class 37, but it involves a lot of milling to the chassis. Um, and obviously that's not going to fit into a Class 37 at all unless it's O-gauge. But it gives you an idea of what the different speakers sound like. Um, hopefully it's helped a few people decide. And it would be interesting to know what your feedback's like. And leave a comment if you've got any any questions or if there's anything else that you think might be worth testing. Thank you.